Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to another plant room hangout. This is my favorite part of my day where I come in here and I just like be with my plants, look at new leaves, get really excited. And I also take this opportunity to like plan out future chores. Like this plant needs this, or this plant's flowering, this plant's also flowering. Maybe I could breathe them together. I have a couple of plants to show you that I recently got. I thought I had three, but I think it's only two. But if it's three, I've completely forgotten about it. I don't know where it is. I've looked around and I'm like, I could have sworn it was three. I have tons of growth updates to show you. And my main purpose today is to kind of go through my tent, mainly my tent, I think, and pick out a plant to chop for Jing. We are celebrating her birthday tomorrow and me being just like the biggest piece of whoever I have not planned ahead. It's going to be a really last minute chop, which is not my favorite because like, ideally I would have had a prop ready for her with a leaf. But in my defense, if I had known exactly what to chop for her, I would have chopped it weeks ago. I just, I don't, I simply don't know. And it's also not her birthday for another few weeks, but she's like going away and blah, blah, blah. So we were celebrating her birthday tomorrow and I just really, I need to do it today or I have nothing for her, which is the worst, the worst. So I'm going to first show you the new plants I got recently. Let me start with this big, big gal. I've purchased this a few weeks ago from my friend Jose, who is moving to Australia. So he's had to sell his entire collection minus like two plants, which he's leaving with his mom. I was really happy to be able to get this one because it is so cute. It's an anthurium. So I think this was like maybe a year and a half ago. NSC Tropicals released uh, Carla Blackie seedlings and they were supposedly pure Carla seedlings, but Jose is one of the unfortunate ones who got a contaminated seed, so it's not pure Carla. So it's Carla as the mom, because it would have been harvested off of a Carla infrastructure, but it's speculated that maybe it was contaminated with papillolamnum because that really does look like half happy to me, or maybe like a pappy hybrid, but it, it's really cute. Jose was offered a refund for it if he would just send it back, but he was like, I really kind of am starting to like it. And this was at a point where it was big enough that he could tell it wasn't real Carla. So I was able to get it. Um, he Here is the tag. Here is the, this is Enid's writing, which is just, I, I'm keeping this tag for sure to have Enid's writing, but it really does grow like a Carla, like horizontal petioles spread out everywhere but she is very cute. And this one also has two growth points. So it just popped a leaf here, but you can see, where is it? Here, another leaf is emerging. So at some point I'm gonna be able to separate this into half. So when I first got it from him, it was in his like usual substrate, which is 100% pure lechuza pond. In, um, I think it was this, no, it was the small one smaller than this. And I just immediately just YOLO'd potted it into tree fern soil into a bigger pot. And I just noticed nice juicy root here. It's definitely accepted the substrate. There's another one down here by the drainage hole. The two growth points were, it looked like it had kind of been dormant for a while or it tried to push something, but it failed because it had that really blunt tip. It wasn't like nice and sharp and healthy. And it's not anything to do with Jose. Um, Jose's like, ability to care for his plants. He just, he was away in Australia for three weeks right before he came back. And while he was there, decided that he had to move right away. So his plants were a little bit under the weather when he came back. So like, this is not really indicative of how good he is at taking care of plants. So don't think that he's like just selling dying anthuriums because he's not. Um, it, it wasn't dying. It definitely wasn't dying, but this leaf was like, it was, cr I cut it. It was crisped up to here, just hundred percent dry brown crisp. So I cut that off and there was a new leaf that had, I think either emerged while he was out or emerged while he was leaving and it grew while he was out and it was like hardening off like this and it was like really like limp and it ended up doing this. That was the newest leaf on the plant. The second newest leaf is this one, which is like the leaf that I was the most in love with because it's so freaking dark and smooth and they have these like little round lobes that look so um round like it reminds me of a fresh pita bread like with a nice butter egg wash on top it's just so round so i'm thinking once like both of these leaves are out and hardened off i'm gonna probably just like divide it right down the middle and i'll have two of these maybe i can share with a friend or sell it so when he sent me a list of the plants that he had for sale, um, this was listed on it, it just said NSE Carla, and I was like expecting 
a seedling like this so I was really not prepared to see a plant this big and it appears that she is really liking this substrate and just as an aside my Carla's like my pure Carla's are both really liking tree fern soil so if you're just like about to acquire a Carla and you don't know what to pot it in Jose had this potted in like 50 50 pond and tree fern so it was like very pond heavy and I upsized the pot and got it into tree fern soil and this one also has accepted the substrate. I get a good amount of questions asking like how to pot their Carla's, like what I like for the substrate. My other Carla, which you're gonna see in a second, is also in tree fern soil. So it's like 50% tree fern fiber, 50% soil, and there's like a ton of perlite, bark, there's some pond in there, and I just mix it by feel until it's nice and fluffy, and I like to see lots of fibers in there to maintain some airflow in the substrate. And the Carla's are rooting really well, I'm having to pot up my other Carla again soon. So I would vouch for this substrate. Obviously I haven't grown every Carla ever, but um, it works really well. Anyway, I think this one is going to be flowering fairly soon. So that will be interesting. I guess I'll just show you my big Carla while we're on the topic of Carla's before I show you my other new plant. I cannot believe how fast she has been growing. So the last time I showed this plant, it was these two leaves. And then since then, this one has grown and she's still expanding a little bit. She's getting close to done and she's so pretty. <laughs> she's so pretty. But this is like the most annoying thing about Carla Bacchier, these petioles. Like it will just grow completely horizontal. Luckily the petioles don't get so long. So it's not like reaching like three feet away. But at the same time, this is probably like the most annoying thing about Carla's. Everything else, she's perfect but this is quite an annoying <laughs> growth habit and she's already poking out a new leaf this one's not even done she cannot be stopped and the roots i didn't up pot this that long ago i feel like it must have been in like january or late december i'll have to check the timeline but like she's going to be ready for a pot soon and i don't even care i'm going to get her into the biggest pot ever and she's going to be flowering and i'm going to make carla babies Hopefully, maybe, or at least Carla hybrids. And I'm pretty sure after this leaf, she's gonna be in Catafil. So it's just crazy. I'm gonna just show you what she looked like when we got her. So this would have been November. She's just a cute little baby. And then December, the next new leaf came out. This is her in January and now February. Man, she's great. She's really, really great. And also, <laughs> random little splotch of variegation right here that's not going to turn into anything but i just thought it'd be interesting to show you can you imagine a variegated carla blackier i feel like the variegation on emergent leaf would just be like hot pink i don't know if i would like that more than this but it's really cool to imagine but i just love the leaves when they're at this stage where it's super pink in the veins and like I get that people think that this looks just like a crystallinum and you just have to like look at it long enough and look at anthuriums long enough to see the difference and she's just wonderful. She's the light of my life. Okay, the other new plant I got was just this past weekend. This is from my friend Jesse. He brought some plants to sell at the North Tropical Live Sale and he brought me this. Well, he didn't bring it for me. <laughs> he showed it to me. And I was like, ooh, and he was just like shoved it in my hand. So this is an Alocasia Friedeck, but it has like green on green variegation. And this is why he was showing it to me because he was like, do you think it will just be like green on green? Because this was a corm he had harvested off his like regular Friedeck, his white variegated one. And he had all these seedlings that were grown in the same um, spot. So they were getting the same amount of light. And for some reason, this one just came out green. I have a feeling that it will eventually go to white, especially with more light, but I don't freaking care. I feel like this is like a second chance at having a fried egg. Um, if you watched my alocasia video, I would have shown you my fried egg, which just put out an all white leaf. That's what she's doing now. So I am really happy to have this one. It's in soil with no drainage. So I might actually just keep it in soil because I was saying in that video that I like growing alocasias in pond. Um, and Leca, but more pond. But also like if I was to put it in soil, I'll just put it in something a little bit of a denser mix, less amended in no drainage. And that's exactly what this is. So maybe I'll do like tree fern soil with like at the bottom for a reservoir and we'll just keep her in a little swamp. Um, but she is so cute. The new leaf is poking out, it's looking really green. Like I don't see variegation on it. 
maybe it's just green on green. Like maybe this green tip is like the lighter green variegation. I, I simply don't know, but she's gonna live, um, I guess in my tent. Phytex and me don't do well with uh, room humidity. So I think I will just keep her in my tent, but she's so cute. Thank you, Jessie. I love her. I don't know what it is about me in filming. I've been conditioned to just get hungry as soon as the camera turns on. I am freaking starving right now. Okay, growth updates. This one is a really fun one. So this is my um, orchid. So it's a Papio Pedulum Sene More. I got this from Echo Genera like almost two years ago and she's finally flowered for me and it's so pretty. And I finally remembered why I bought this orchid in the first place because it had been so long since I picked it up at the pop-up and I only just picked it up like I didn't plan on buying it. I was just like, oh, why don't I get an orchid? And like they provide photos of the, the flower because they don't send flowering specimens for the most part. So I was looking at the leaves and I was like, maybe I'll get something a little bit smaller, but with like interesting foliage. So I have some interest in the plant even when it's not flowering. So I picked this one with like the silvery kind of bluish gray variegation and the backs of the leaves are purple. So I thought it was pretty cute but I honestly just completely neglected this plant for two years and I still neglect this plant. It does need a repot. I think it's mostly in perlite, like chonky perlite and orchiata. It's a little bit of sphagnum moss mixed through, but I finally remembered why I picked this one. It was mainly because of like the dark evil looking flower and it has these like little almost blackish purple hairs on it. I don't know if it's gonna open any further than this, but this like peduncle is also like blackish purple and hairy and I hope it stays for quite a long time. She lives in my exo, this big one here, just at the very, very top. And this flower is touching the grow light, which makes me a little bit nervous. It doesn't really have a scent, which makes me think that maybe it has more opening up to do. I feel like orchids often will have a scent. It does seem a little bit closed off, so I feel like maybe it has more this action to do, but this one is very exciting. The only orchids I've ever gotten to flower were jewel orchids and those flowers just really aren't anything exciting. They're like small and a little bit like, not clustered, but they're just like a whole bunch of little white flowers, but I've never gotten one of these to flower. And now I really want my other one to flower because it's also a lady slipper orchid, but it has like a really long whiskers. So these whiskers come down here and they just trail down to the floor and it's like yellow and I'm just really excited for that one to bloom and that one lives in my mills bow. But do not let me buy like 20 more orchids. Okay, if you see me shopping for orchids, just tell me to stop. I, can't, I do not have the room for them. A few months ago, I chopped my king of spades into three pieces and one of them so sadly died. This plant is so difficult to get a successful cutting from, but one cutting did push a growth point some of you might have seen it in a past video. And when I last showed it, it was just like a little growth point, but I was really excited because it was also rooting, which you can't see now because it's covered in algae. Anyways, I was not prepared for how cute this first leaf was gonna be. Are you ready? Look at it. Look at how round it is. It is so precious and darling. And I'm actually kind of, I guess I'm not surprised that it's this size, but I was, a little bit surprised it was so big. I guess the stem is pretty mature, but it was like a mid cut and um, it's just, it's just wonderful. I'm gonna ship this to Amanda soon, but I just love her so much. It's gonna be really sad to see her go, but I just want her to have one of these in her collection because I know she really likes silver, um, silver venation. She also likes like round things. Um, and obviously she likes anthuriums and she doesn't have one of these. She does have a king of spades hybrid, but she doesn't have just like a regular king of spades. Um, and speaking of which, my mother plant has also pushed a leaf. It's annual leaf. This thing grows so slow and it's probably going to be a little bit dinged up because it like bumped its head onto the side of the pot a few times and I had to move it. This one was repotted at the same time and it had very little roots left on it after I took two cuttings from it, but it has really just taken over the pot. And this is also a tree fern soil. The leaves kind of deteriorated a bit since being chopped. So it did yellow a little bit at the edges, but the root system is super, super healthy. And it started to flower recently as well. I have this little organza bag on it because since I had that one forgetty eye inflow that was just like accidentally pollinated by a 
bug or something. Like I didn't pollinate it, but it produced berries. I'm trying to prevent the cross contamination as much as possible. So this is just like little organza jewelry bags I got off Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I think this is like a pack of 50 for like $9. And I've shared some with Charmaine, but this is like a little condom, if you will, to protect this from being, because there's like a lot of flowering anthuriums right where it lives, like right here. And they kind of like crisscross sometimes, but look how red this inflow is. And the spathe is like so small and red, just one monochromatic red. It's the same color as the peduncle as well. It's very satisfying to look at. It's just like this like oxblood red. It's really freaking pretty. So I am not actually sure what to do with this pollen because I'm not going to pollinate it. Um, I've heard so many times and especially from Lauren that King of Space is not a good mom like a not a good seed bearing parent. She's tried to pollinate her king of spades, I think twice and both times it took, but the yield was tiny. I think she did it with like Lux. So it was king of spades Lux and she maybe got like five seeds off of it. And I think she did another time, maybe with another king of spades or something like that. And it just either didn't take or the yield was teeny, teeny, tiny. In an ideal world, I want to use this pollen on a red crystallinum. My red crystallinum is not flowering, so maybe I'll see if one of my friends has a red crystallinum that they would like to take this pollen for. Because I think the best feature about King of Spades is how round it is, and I don't want to take away from the roundness by pairing it up with something like really muted, really dark, really elongated. Like I feel like a King of Spades pappy would be pretty underwhelming. So I really want to just get this leaf just exaggerated. More silver, more red, equally as round if possible. But yeah, I, my assessment at least grows so slow. I'll be lucky if I get two leaves a year on it. Um, even inside of a greenhouse, it grows really, really slowly, but it's like super easy going. So even after I chop it, it never, at least the top cutting never like, the, never fails. The top cutting always roots really fast and the roots are really, really, I don't know if you can tell how thick and juicy they are. So this is a pretty drought tolerant anthurium and it doesn't need high humidity at all. Cause this prop, this grew out on that shelf just in open air and it's pretty perfect. Like there's a little bit of dinging here because it grew all, again inside the pot and it just kept hitting the side and I have to keep repositioning it so it wouldn't like damage itself. So that's what this is, but no like humidity related damage. So I want to show you my dark phoenix because this is our opportunity to at the same time experience this new leaf because I have not been able to look at it properly because it grew facing the wall but it looks freaking massive and I'm gonna take it down now. Okay, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Holy crap. It's so... Oh my gosh. Oh, you're just wonderful. I've been staring at the back of this leaf for what feels like ages and I can see the shape of the lows, but I cannot tell how pillowy it is, but it just, this plant never disappoints. It's so big. Like, honestly, this is the leaf prior to it, which is quite big already, but this feels like monstrous. And little update, it is properly pushing an inflow now, which we are going to breed. And I say we, because, um, I don't really have anything I super want to breed with it right now. I was contemplating a couple things. RA5, my Papillonum RA5. I was also contemplating Waraquinum because my Warak, which you're going to see in a little bit, started flowering, but that flower, um, it decided not to keep pushing it. It just kind of poked out and it, it aborted. So I'm going to be doing a little collaborative effort with Lauren because she has a plant that I really want to match up with my Dark Phoenix and she's finally going to produce babies. This has been so long in the making. This plant does not flower at a young age. Like it gets really mature before it even tries to do anything. And by really mature, I mean like it's been in caterpillar for like 10 leaves and it's like quite big. I don't know if like it's something I'm doing with the like light that I'm using on it, the substrate, the feed. But I also feel like my anthuriums flower quite often and I don't typically have trouble getting an anthurium to flower, but the dark phoenix really takes a long time. And Jing also had the same experience. Hers got quite mature before it even tried to flower and hers flowered like a year ago. So I feel like mine really took its sweet time 
but we're finally here and I am going to have this one as the seed parent and I'm pretty sure she can handle it. Like she's freaking huge and the root system is massive and she has a lot of leaves to support and I don't give one crap if it drops a lot of the lower leaves because these like bright green leaves are, are kind of dying off. Like it doesn't really look like it's dying off, but this is not what it looks like when it's healthy. Like this is what it looks like when it's at its healthiest and even on the fully, fully hardened leaves. This leaf is very dark and it's been, I don't know, five, six months. But anyway, hopefully this one will pass on its like very sharp and narrow characteristics to its offspring. And I'm, I'm just, I think she's going to be a good mom. I'm, I feel like I have a good feeling about it. Little bit of a repot update from last week's video. So I repotted a bunch of plants in that video and this one was repotted in that video. This is Ace of Spades crossed with Luxurians and the leaf has expanded beautifully. <laughs> um, but <laughs> she's filled out this pot with roots almost entirely in a matter of like 10 days which is quite alarming. But this definitely gives me some encouragement uh, for repotting a plant while it has a new leaf because at the time, the leaf was like at this stage. This is a different plant, obviously. It was like that. So I was like, maybe it's going to kind of not harden off very big, but it's still super floppy and it's expanding really nicely. And this one is so pretty. Like it's so, it does this like cupping thing and it's quite narrow. So pretty soon I'm gonna be able to chop this. I think the next time I upsize the pot, which is gonna to have to be soon based on this. And I also, I watered this like a few days ago and this is really super light now. Definitely need some water after I stop filming. But yeah, I've been more and more seeing people with Lux hybrids. Cause like, I would say the market is extremely saturated with Luxurians hybrids. And for the most part, a lot of them look extremely similar, especially in the hardened leaf. You'll see some more variation on the emergent leaves in terms of colors and stuff, but very rarely do you have one that has like a very distinct leaf shape. This might be like a more distinct one, maybe. And also this one, which is Lux Ralph Lynham Fort Sherman. But I'm really excited to be seeing more and more people crossing Luxurians hybrids again with something very velvety that's not at all glossy, not Luxurians hybrids. So like, for example, this Ace of Spades Lux, if I were to cross it again with Ace of Spades, it's just, it has a completely different texture. This is pretty glossy. It's not as glossy as the Luxurians, but it is like not velvet. But when people cross them again with velvet, it gets even more velvety. And some seedlings that grow out look more like a velvet plant, but very bullate. And that's exactly what I want to see more of. And the variation between the seedlings is going to be really interesting. So we've reached kind of capacity for Lux hybrids. Like I don't think people are really that interested in them anymore. I still really, really like them and I don't plan on getting rid of any of mine because I think each one of them has like a just a distinct beauty. But now all these babies are getting to flowering size. Um, I'm really excited to see more Lux hybrids crossed again to Velvet. But at the same time, I'm not 100% sure if it's like a very selective process because I know Luxurians has extremely strong genes. Like the Luxurians look with the bullet and the shiny is pretty dominant of a gene. So maybe it's like the ones that I'm seeing that are really, really super velvety with just like a bullet finish might not occur that often within a seed batch. I haven't personally talked to anyone who did this cross, so I guess that remains to be seen. Another repot update, this one I did about a month ago. This is Nigrolamnum GG crossed with Portier, and I moved it from the medium pot, so this size, to this size. It has rooted pretty well, this is tree fern soil. Yeah, actually there's a good amount of roots all around, but the leaf, it pushed out after that, it's pretty freaking massive because the leaf prior to it was this one and it sized up a lot. It's still a little bit bleached. I was saying I was going to pull it back from the light, which I did. I, I pulled it away from the light a little bit, but this leaf was so tall and it kind of moved its way forward. So I'm thinking it's a little bit chlorotic looking from high light, but the leaves that I was showing before that were looking chlorotic, have started to get really black. Like it has definitely gotten darker in low light, which I didn't really think that leaves could really do that once they got bleached, but 
it did get darker and that like lightened area in between the veins has kind of gone away not entirely but i swear this is darker than it was before maybe because this leaf has been hardened off for so long it's not going to really kind of heal itself but this one definitely has evened out its skin tone and it's looking a lot more inky black and it's like such an oil slick so unfortunately this one is a little bit bleached but it's really big and i'm actually surprised at how quickly this one has grown and i also will be able to chop this for charmaine soon but this one i probably ideally would be growing it in like quite dark conditions to make it really inky black but it still has a good amount of expanding to do because look how floppy this leaf still is Okay, so I've been growing my Warakuenum back from like a leafless stump because I chopped all of its leaf off because it had like this like powdery mildew stuff. It was looking really gross. It was living inside my exo, so I moved it out into open shelving. It lives just on this shelf here. And the new leaf is, is so freaking big. I mean, as far as queens go, it's nothing like groundbreaking, but it's the biggest leaf I've ever grown. And this is growing in like 40% humidity. And she's actually been growing so fast. She was kind of dormant for a while. I would say probably like three or four months and then just started pushing one leaf after the other. It's also growing in tree fern soil and no drainage. And I actually don't even have a reservoir layer like Lekka at the bottom. It's just tree fern soil all the way to the bottom. And I had made a little collar for it, but it's like, it's gonna need a pole or something at some point. There's so much stem above the substrate. Or I just need to find like essentially a no drainage vessel because I like I've been liking growing the queen in no drainage but I need to get one that's quite tall so essentially a bucket and I've been liking no drainage for queens just because I find they don't like to dry out like they like to stay on the wetter side kind of constantly and the, I guess this is what I'm learning is like queens can live in ambient conditions like I'd seen it done before I personally hadn't done it until this and it was because this root system was huge like it you can't tell because it's so full of algae but this was like a snug fit when i first potted it and that was almost a year ago no more than a year ago really was it more than a year ago maybe around a year ago i, I don't remember but just to give you a sense of the size of the leaf she's still i think she's pretty close to done i think she has a little bit left to do and it actually flowered so this is the flower that it decided that it didn't want to do anymore, but it did start poking out here. So I'm pretty sure this next leaf will be flowering again. And if I just peel the sheath back, this next caterpill or Toblerone is looking pretty big, which is a little bit alarming because this one, if it decides it's gonna push a leaf in the opposite direction, I'm gonna have to move it because this is already like taller than the shelf that it's on. So it's just kind of on the edge and kind of, you know, leaning its way out. When I first started growing anthuriums, I was like, there's no way I can grow a queen. Everyone's saying like, it needs like 100% humidity. It needs to live inside of a dome. Don't even breathe on it. Don't do anything to it. But this has been like one of my best ambient condition growers. And it's like sizing up. It's very happy. So yeah, like I, I would say it needs a repot at this point. I just don't have the vessel for it. So if I can't get anything, it would be ideal if I could get something just like two inches taller. And I can also get it onto a pole because that might also encourage leaves to face out the other way. Because I, I do feel like plants can sense that there's like a tree behind it. So long as it's rooted into the moss pole or whatever sort of support you're giving it, I think it can sense that that's not where it wants leaves to go. But sometimes plants are just annoying. But this one has also been really exciting, not only because of its size and like the speed and like the tall loaves, but also because I can't see any spider mite damage on it. You might be able to see like little speckles this is like hardened, dried off mucilage. It's like the juices of the leaf to kind of keep it lubricated while it's expanding. Um, you can really see it up here. It's kind of like dried rice water looking stuff. And the only rip is, you'll see it better in the back, right here, which is extremely minimal for a queen in uh, dry conditions in winter in Canada. Another mini update, I showed this plant last week, but it was just an emergent leaf at the time. And I just want to show you how she's expanded. This is my Magnificum Crystallinum, crossed with the Carla Black Gay from Amanda. Look at this new leaf. Oh, she's wonderful. This plant was looking so ugly 
I'm gonna just throw in some b-roll of an old video just a couple of months ago. I was just showing you why I wanted to kind of repot it. It what really wasn't doing that well and it had some root rot, but I got it into a bigger pot, into tree fern soil, um, into drainage. I think it was in no drainage. Tree fern fiber with a leca layer at the bottom and I just think that the roots rotted at the bottom because there was leca at the bottom but that leca layer was drying out faster than the substrate above it and i wasn't keeping anything in that reservoir so that was kind of what prompted me to like keep that reservoir um topped up if there are roots down there because i was seeing so many deflated dry rot roots at, down at the bottom in a no drainage vessel which i thought it would have been fine because like it's enclosed so like the humidity should be there but it was getting dry rot only at the tips down at the bottom so this one has recovered so nicely <laughs> and this reservoir is nearing dry now like there's there's no water inside the saucer and it's looking like there's moisture but it's going to be depleting within the next like day or so but i am really glad that this one has recovered so nicely because i love this plant it's a really nice mix of the Meg Chris and the Carla. Like you can definitely see the Carla, but it has like vibrant neon in it. And it's like so pretty. I don't think it's going to be, maybe it will be bigger than the last one. It might be slightly bigger. I don't think it'll be drastic because I think it's getting close to hardening off. It's still floppy, but not like the tissue, like wet tissue paper floppy. And then I'll be able to chop this ugly leaf off. You can also see the Carla growth pattern on this one with the horizontal petioles. But luckily the petioles have also taken on the Carla length. They're not like super insanely long, like Magnificum hybrids can be and also Crystallinum. Okay, I wanted to document this next one just to capture its emergent leaf color because it's so pretty. This is my Carla Bevep. I have two. This one is the one that is from, well, I got it from Amanda, but it's the collaboration between Juan and Grant. So the Carla would have been the GPH and the Bevep would have been Grant's, I think it was round. Um, this is what the emergent leaf looks like. It's just this like dusty, oh, it's kind of getting blown out. Dusty, like kind of like whiny red. I'm trying to move it around so we can actually capture the actual color because it's a little bit brown, I feel like on the viewfinder. It is really like a whiny, dusty color in real life. And the veins are so pink. It's just like this baby pink. It's so pretty. I've been having a little bit of a rough time with this one. Like it just keeps like, I don't know, like not growing great and it's not really sizing up for me. So this is the biggest pot I've ever potted in and it hasn't rooted like amazingly. I only see a little bit of roots on the side, but it also is flowering again. So this is its second flower. Just started poking this out as this leaf was expanding. We did try to pollinate one of um, Charmaine's plants with the flower, but it really didn't produce much pollen. So it didn't take, which would have been a little bit sad, but this would have been a good parent because like the colors are so amazing on it. And when I look at Carla hybrids, I feel like the veins of the Carla is not a recessive gene. I don't know if it's like super dominant, but it's like on the dominant side, just by observation. I'm not a genetics expert, but yeah, I'm trying to see if I can get this leaf to start looking darker than its other ones. But the other ones look like this. And over time, this little butthole starts to protrude like this. Actually, Amanda has a GPH self um, that she got from Juan. And I just saw it the other day when we were FaceTiming and it actually does this too. It, it looks exactly like this. It's just like poking out and it's super pinky red, but it will not show like this for a while. It's only after it's fully hardened and then like add another couple months on top of that. Does it actually start poking out like that? But I actually really enjoy it. Like Amanda thinks it looks so gross and she just, she doesn't like it. But for me, I like it. I, I like it a lot. Okay, let's go through some options on what we can cut for Miss Jing. I'll show you like my first choice, which were my first two choices, which I don't know if it's gonna be the best choice. So this is my BVEP that I got from Amanda. And I feel like, I know there's a lot of stem. Amanda always sends us plants with like the freaking longest stem. Like I just like, just chop it again, just chop it again. But she always sends us like massive stems. So this one is a maybe, although I just repotted this like maybe a month ago or a month and a half ago, but it hasn't really filled out the pot. So I don't know, maybe it's actually good to have insurance, but this is the newest leaf. It's freaking wonderful. It hasn't really sized up much, but I also don't think it has a bet best root system is really not a huge root system and the other one 
is this BVEP. This is also from Amanda, but it was originally bred by Grant. I don't know which BVEP it was with which BVEP. And this leaf, unfortunately, got banged up on its way out. I think like I was trying to put a plant back and it, this leaf kind of folded and just made a little hole, which is a little bit sad, which makes me feel like I'm not as sad to chop it. But also this one, this one has more of a root system. So maybe this one I could chop. But I like this one a lot. Um, I'm gonna have to like, I'll, I'll do this off camera because I want to do it downstairs and my boyfriend's working from home today so I don't really want to be making noise and filming. But it's gonna be one of these two maybe if the root system is good enough and it's looking like a good good place to chop because I don't want to give her a rootless stump. Like I, I want to at least have roots so she can enjoy a leaf at least within the next month or so. And the other option, and I don't know if she has this plant. That woman has so many plants and she doesn't talk about all of them, but she's got this just like tent where just, she just has everything. And I forget she has plants or I never knew she had plants and she'll just randomly pull a plant out and I'd be like, when did you get that? And she's like, oh, I got it like two years ago. And she doesn't really get rid of plants entirely often. So she's just like, her collection just keeps growing. But this one is definitely more chop ready than my VVEP. So I might, at the same time, I kind of want to repot it as well because it's kind of like filling out this glass vessel. It's in pond and no drainage. And it's currently gr pushing growth, but there's no leaf emerging yet. So I think this is a good time to get it out and see what's going on. But there's like so many growth points. This will definitely be a faster one. But again, I don't know if she has it. I know she has Dark Phoenix. I know she has another Dark Phoenix hybrid or two from cartel because she got one of those like mystery boxes from them but i don't know that she has the dark phoenix ralph Lynham fort sherman so i'm gonna bring this downstairs with me as well it's holding on to so many growth points that i think that it's actually slowing it down because none of the growth points are moving very fast they're not stalling completely but they're moving at like a glacial pace every time i show this plant though on camera it just looks so hd because the sheen is like just it's such a pretty sheen that this one has so even if she does have it, it will definitely present differently because these were grown from seeds. So she might have a second specimen, maybe. I don't know. I'm just trying to justify all my choices just in case that the BVEP doesn't work out. And other than that, is there anything else I could chop? There's another plant uh, that I've already chopped. So this is a cutting that is only starting to wake up now. This is um, Anthurium diabloense. I took this maybe a month ago. This is my top cutting. If you don't know what Diablo ones looks like, it just bounced back so beautifully. This was the newest leaf on it when I chopped it and it's just starting to harden off this leaf. It is so cute. It's like getting more of like that V shape. So I found that um, juvenile Diablo ones looks more like this, kind of roundish. There's definitely more of a leaf blade um, down below the sinus, but as it gets more mature, the ears start to get longer and this part of the leaf blade starts to shorten. So I saw Jose specimen that he was like sharing with Anna and Anna had brought it in and it was more mature than mine. I'm not kidding, it looked like a boomerang. There was so much ear. And then this part was like this short. It was just like that, it was so cool. So it's starting to go a little bit that direction. Like the ears are definitely getting bigger. And this one is like such a trooper. I was actually really, nervous about it because I didn't leave that much stem of the substrate. It wouldn't like stand up straight. That's why I had to put rocks in in the pot to keep it upright, but it has rooted so nicely. This is also tree, tree fern soil. Um, I'm trying to like keep this not as wet because I feel like this one is not like a water loving anthurium. I could be wrong, but so far it's been like such a trooper. I actually am giving this a little bit too much light because this leaf, I don't know if you can tell, it's getting a little bit bleached here, but I wonder if she would like this. Cause I know she does like her weirdo plants and you really don't see Diablo ends being offered often. So that's a prop that's like already taken, already waking up. So maybe I could give her that. I'm not sure, but this is like equally a, quite a hyped, but also underrated Anthurium. Cause I just don't think people like glossy as much as they like dark and velvet, but it's freaking awesome. If you have the chance to get a Diablo ones, I highly recommend it. Cause they're not that expensive because they aren't that highly coveted. But for the people who do enjoy this kind of like glaucous silver sheen, they enjoy like evil looking ears and stuff like that. There's always buyers for a plant like this. You just don't get people clamoring for it. If you know what I mean? So those are my options. 
as of right now. Again, I'm not gonna film my chopping, so I'm gonna just insert B-roll right here of what I ended up going with. I really hope she likes it. By the time this video goes out, she will have already received it, so no spoilers here. Anyways, I better get going on the chops because I'm, I'm freaking nervous that I don't have anything for her. So I'm gonna go even though I have so much more to show you, but we can always do that a different day. But before I go, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. I'm not one to like care too much about subscriber count or like views. In fact, like personally, I don't really want my channel to get that big. Like in the back of my mind, I just have this fear of my channel growing in any capacity because I just don't want like the awful people to start discovering my channel and leave like ridiculous comments. So I'm really happy for it to stay at like a nice manageable micro size. But at the same time, it just blows my mind that there's 10,000 of you who are subscribed and I, it does feel good. So thank you. I hope you guys are having a lovely weekend. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.